golf as a sport over the years has been something a little I mean, comes like a little mystery, I think, to people that, that don't really understand how the game works. But like for those of them in there, it's more something of a thrill and passion because it's something that comes from the heart. Now, today, that's my job, to bring you guys up close and personal, let you guys in on how this beautiful sport works. Hey, I'm not going to do that alone. I have, a, I have a veteran to do this thing with me. Um, this is a, a man who's been a captain, a chairman, and as well as the former president of this very great place, Enugu Sports Club, and as well as the golf course. He will be my guest to let me in on all the questions I have. And I think just after to remove all the question marks around any questions I have for you, this is a very beautiful segment of Sports Unscripted. My name is Keiza Uchenna Uji. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, welcome back, um, guys. This is still Spot on Scripted right here at My Color TV. Uh, like I told you guys earlier, I have um, um, a handsome daddy <laughs> to my left, like, like who's been uh, more like uh, an inspiration to lots of um, youths and persons like who are looking to get into the course of golf, and he'll be my guest. Daddy, you're welcome. Thank you, Che. I'm really delighted uh, to be a part of this program. It means a lot to me, sir. Thank you. Um, daddy, may we know you? Okay, I'm Ben Itiaba. I, um, I play golf. I have been captain of uh, the golf section of the Nibu Sports Club. I was captain here from 2003 to 2005. And, well, prior to that period, I was vice captain. And, but I won the election to, to lead uh, the, the club. And um, after that, I became the vice chairman of Enugu Sports Club uh, between 2015. Did I say 2003 earlier? Yeah, you no, said No, no, it was from 2013. Okay. It was 2013 that I became captain. And um, after that, 2015, mm -hmm. um, the vice chairman of Enugu Sports Club, and then I won the election to be uh, the executive chairman of the club in 2017. And then I handed over uh, uh, in 2019. So I'm free to enjoy my game of golf. Uh, once more. Sounds like an interesting journey. Well, it has been. Uh, I've been a sports person all my life. I've played golf uh, actively for about 15 years. Uh, prior to that, I was enjoying the game in England from the age of 20. But I was mainly going to golf ranges, hitting the ball. Uh, it was when I came back to Nigeria that I actively started playing golf. All right, now, that is something really exciting for me. Now, I ask this question because, like, before now, Many young persons have always believed that golf is something meant for gentlemen. I think played by the elites. I think that's the basis why like, we don't really have like most young people come close. So the basis why we're here just maybe just to actually, you know, make people understand more about how golf works. Now, how, how, how do you actually make people understand that golf is not really meant for the elite? Thank you. Okay, um, I'll, I'll start by saying that it's good to describe the game of golf, the wonderful game of golf, as a game for gentlemen, but it's also played by ladies. And we have a, ladies, wow. a lot of ladies who play you know, much better than men, uh, who win uh, all the time. Um, but um, it's not a game that only the elite play. Okay. Uh, it seems like it is the elite alone that play the game of golf, but it's not that. Uh, but why it does seem so is because you need a lot of time to play golf. I mean, a full round of golf will take you about five hours. And wow. if you're struggling, you, don't have, you cannot afford five hours to play. So you find that mostly retired people who have made their money, you know, sort of have all the time in the world to play golf, will play golf. For the younger ones, um, if, you, you know, if you're in between the school, you can play. Uh, holiday uh, periods, uh, you, can, you can play. And uh, weekends you can play. So it's just the most important thing is to be able to afford the game. And when I say to afford to play the game, uh, it's I'm not just talking about affording it, uh, you know, by way of money, but by way of time. If you if you don't have the time, it doesn't matter how wealthy you are, you cannot play the game of golf. So it is for everybody. Um, a lot of players started from being caddies, you know, bad careers to actively becoming professionals, golf professionals. Uh, these are not people from elite homes. These are, from poor homes, and they've gone on to empower themselves through the game of golf. So it's a game anybody can play. You can play from uh, as long as you're fit enough, uh, young as you're fit enough to walk and swing, uh, up right up till 90 and more. Wow. I know golfers who are older than 90. All right, now talking about being fit and swinging. Yes. Now, many people used to have this, um, this notion that um, 
golf events for lazy persons because like it doesn't require a lot of fit like strength and energy like you have in football and basketball how true is that that's absolutely not true um when you look at players uh, when they they are on the course playing golf they look so lazy people with nothing better to do with, with their time than to just walk around doing nothing chasing chasing a very small ball over <laughs> over 18 holes but not at all <clears throat> by the time you've done a round of golf you've walked uh, over seven kilometers. Wow. So can you imagine walking briskly for seven kilometers in a one that does to you? The strength, the saps, the energy you have to devote uh, to that. So you exercise the whole body. Um, when you swing, you exercise the upper part of your body. Wow. When you swing, you're twisting your waist, so you're exercising the lower part of your body. When you swing, you hold your tummy in, so you're exercising the tummy. Mm. But above all, it gives you all the mental exercise you need. And um, so I, I can't imagine any game that uh, gives you an all-round exercise uh, more so than golf. And uh, is it a lazy man's game? You try it. First time you play 18 <laughs> holes, you'll be on your bed for three days. Wow. Uh, it happens to everybody. Hmm. And, uh, and the first time you play golf, uh, the, the confession would be, oh, I thought it was for lazy people. Now I know better. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think um, I might hope to actually say that in my own mouth sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we're always, you know, sort of, uh, I've encouraged a lot of people to play golf. Uh, mm -hmm. Over the years, there's hardly any year that I don't give out a golf bag in wow. the last 15 years. If I'm not giving a golf bag, so maybe 15, 20 wow. golf bags to encourage people to play. The way people are attracted to the game is that somebody you know, mostly, will bring you in mm. uh, and, you know, sort of lob almost lobby you mm. uh, to do this thing that, because it will be good for you, it will be good for your health, it will be go good for networking, for meeting the right people, mixing in the right social circles. There's so many benefits in playing golf. I'll give you one benefit. I'll give you, let me give you an example. All right. The watch I'm wearing, I bought in London. Okay. And the day I bought it, I wanted to know from the sales girl how much it was. And she told me that it was discounted. I, you know, being an Anibu guy, I wanted a further discount. And she said, no, we can't do further discount. This is fully discounted. And I said, don't you have a manager? Mm. I said, yeah, but the manager's not going to help you. I said, call him. The lady I was talking to was a black lady. It was on Oxford Street. The guy came out, he was a white guy. And I said to him, my, 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 my friend, um, I, I need this watch for the discounted. Mm. And uh, he took a look at it and uh, told me, uh, it was over a thousand pounds at the time. Mm. I, it was discounted by 50%. And he told me that uh, they're going to take off another 10% off the already discounted price. And um, this girl looked at me and he did that and walked away. And knowing that obviously I was going to want to know why. The girl looked at me and just wondered, sir, who are you? Why are you asking me who I am? I'm Ben, if you want to know my name. Okay. So because this has never happened, that anybody will come here, ask for a discount over on top of the discounted price and gets it. I said, but it has happened. Then he went and she went and called the manager. So, you know, what's going on? This is not the instruction you gave us. You know what this guy said to, him, to her? You look at him, he's a golfer. He's a golfer. And I started looking at myself. You know, had, you, I, like, had you any outfit? No, it was then I realized that my friend, uh, Pat Chidolue, uh, who lives in Abuja, had asked me to buy a golf bag for him. And I was <laughs> carrying the bag. <laughs> I, carried, I carried the bag into the shop. And this guy saw it. And the guy saw it. The manager, of course, was a golfer. Wow. So he did that. A golf is like a cult. A cult, a brilliant cult, a nice cult, in the sense that golfers trust each other. Golfers will go out of their way to help each other. And uh, because, you know, to play that game, you must be a gentleman or a lady. And uh, you must, you've inverted. You know, you cannot lie. Golf is the only game in the world where you score yourself. You score, you record your own score. Nobody records it for you. So if you want to beat the next guy, then you lie about your score. But you cannot lie about it. So to be a golfer, you must be honest. You must be somebody with integrity. You must work hard. You need a lot of energy. And this is also part of why leaders, great leaders, the world over play golf. Because golf is about decision making. Every shot you play, it's about taking, making a decision, taking a decision, and getting it right. If you get it wrong, you have, of course, uh, a few more shots to, you know, sort of to, to play to, to correct it. So um, it's a game that anybody can play from the poor uh, to the wealthy to the leaders of the world. Consider the number of world presidents uh, who play golf. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's what we're lacking in Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, so far, I think um, the energy has been upbeat, and I've been enjoying every second I have um, with Honorable Benetia. But um, while you were saying something earlier, you said something about encouraging. Now, I want us to take the spotlight down towards the youth. Now, you've been here, you served as the captain, the chairman, and as a president. Now, has there been any 
any any project that maybe the, the, the club made maybe to encourage youths to be a part of this good cause? Yeah, we've always done that. And uh, in my tenure, I did quite a lot of that because I understood the importance of getting the young ones into golf, especially getting those ones who are not from the so-called elite ones into, into the game of golf. It worked. I used to organize um, a, a competition for caddies here. You know, they play. We allow, in fact, this is Enugu is one of the uh, courses in the world where caddies are allowed to play. Usually it's mem members alone that play on these courses. But we, because we have downtime when a lot of members are work are not playing, so we encourage our caddies who are not in school at that time to come and play. And they do. They perfect their game. All over Nigeria, wherever there's a caddies tournament or a young youth tournament, go and check the results. The top three will, will be from Enugu. And that's because this is the place where they get to play. In other courses, they are not allowed to play. So we encourage them. And I tell you what uh, will interest you. Uh, when I came here as captain, we didn't have a golf professional. If you know how golf works, any serious club must have a golf professional. I went to play in Ghana, in Tema, and um, I met a, a golf pro, Brave Mensa, and uh, wanted to, you know, sort of paid as a guest to play. And uh, he wanted to know my name, I told him. Uh, he asked me which course I was coming from. I said, uh, in uh, Nigeria, first of all. I thought he didn't know anything about Nigerian golf. And he said, which golf club in Nigeria? And I told him, uh, um, Enugu. Ah, he said, uh, what of, uh, um, Brave, um, oh, what's his name again? Um, we had a pro that died. Uh, oh, his name has uh, escaped me. Uh, what about him? I said, he's dead. I said, who's your new pro? I told him, Brave, uh, didn't know his name. I said, we didn't know his name. I said, we, didn't, we don't have a pro. Tell me a card, so you guys are not serious. So that helped me. I was vice captain at the time. And then and there, I vowed that um, any time I became captain, I was going to bring in a golf pro, and I did that. So I brought in the first golf pro to Enugu uh, to run this place for the first time in 20 years after I took over as captain. And uh, after that, we qualified two golf professionals from here for the first time ever. Wow. And both of them started as back carriers from young boys under the age of 10. And you know, they started playing the game, they became associate players today they are golf professionals in Nigeria. So you can't, and these are guys, when I say golf professionals, who can play against Tiger Woods. And I, I, I seem to be leading the discussion. I hope it's okay with you. No, it's okay. okay. Now, have you asked yourself why in the ranking of golf professionals in the world, you've never seen any Nigerian name there? Okay? Not in the top 20, not in the top 50, not in the top 100. And I'll tell you why. Because we are yet to understand that golf is big business. And like any big, big business, you invest to get it right. We've not been supporting our golf players enough. If we can put money behind, I wish I had the money to do that. I mean, I, I attracted a lot of funds here okay. as captain. I did a lot of projects. We later, you probably get to see them. But if we can get people to put in money behind these golf professionals, believe me, in another five years, you begin to hear their names uh, in, in the world uh, top ranking. So. It's got this big business, we need to support our golf professionals. And the only way we can do it is not just to train them, but we'll have to put in money, sponsor them, uh, so that they can be as exposed in the game as the rest. All right, now, I'll still have to bring you back towards the, the youth involvement. Now, are there preconditions before a youth can actually be a part of this, this course here? Um, you know, usually the young ones come in as uh, caddies. So, of course, you'll be vetted. To make sure we're not having a, a drug addict or uh, somebody who's a thief coming to carry our bags because then things will go missing. So you'll be vetted, you know, like you'll do in any employment before they come in. But it's not only the golf, uh, the caddies that, uh, the young ones that play golf. I have three kids and they're all golfers. My wife is a golfer. So if you go to my house now, you'll find that we have about 12 golf bags in, in the garage, okay? Now, so children of members also play golf. But you find that golf is something that, you know, you need to have a passion for it to be able to appreciate it. So even if you're the most passionate golfer mm -hmm. and your children aren't uh, sharing those with, uh, with the passion with you, mm -hmm. bring them in, they'll go away. And when I'm lucky, my kids play golf and they enjoy it. So are there conditions? You can either come in vetted as a, a caddy mm -hmm. or you can come in as a child of a member who's already been vetted. Okay. So you yeah, have, you can come in. And besides, if you want to, you know, play the game and join the game, you know, the, 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 the club, there are ways of doing that. Just approach a member and we'll facilitate it. And we're always happy to welcome people, okay. young and old. That sounds nice. Now, golf is known all over the world as a gentleman's sport, played by the elite. 
Would you say the absence of more golf courses in the East says something about the definition of elite in the region? <laughs> Um, we have uh, uh, quite a big, a yawning uh, uh, absence of the right golf courses in, in, the, in the southeast. But I'm not sure it says something about the elite. You cannot define the elite just by the game of golf. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, golf is a game that the elite uh, play. Uh, but if you go to Ikoi, I think our premier golf uh, club in Nigeria is probably Ikoi Club. If you go there, you find that most of the uh, members of Ikoi Club are from the southeast, from Anambra and other states in the southeast, mostly Anambra. Okay, if you go to IBB in Abuja, another sound, you know, sort of a latest club, okay. you go to Keja Club, all of them, you have uh, Igos in the southeast, Anambra. There. Now, so the mere fact that the ones home are not taking on the game is only because they have not been exposed to the game. Okay. It just doesn't mean that we lack elite at home. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. but. This is where somebody like me comes in okay. uh, to say, look, say for instance, in Anambra, I'm running for governor. And uh, one of the things I will do, and I think people will attack me for it, oh, you haven't finished doing the, mm. the mass, uh, the most popular uh, sports and you're attacking golf. No, but I'll develop the game of golf in Anambra State. Nice. I'll use golf to develop Anambra State. Okay? I'll use sports to develop Anambra State. Okay? In all the uh, 21 local government areas of Anambra State, there will be strong presence of sports, not golf, of sports. Okay. But in the senatorial zones, of course, there will be strong presence of golf. But, you know, our people like football. And if you go around, there are no parks where they can play. Yeah, that's true. There are no mini stadiums or whatever they can, even the five-a-side, five you know, indoor football pitches are not there. Yeah. What is going on? These are things that are so easy to do. So we'll make sure that we attack football, athletics. Basketball. I played volleyball as a as a student. Okay. All of these things will be available. And then uh, well, let me not say hockey because that's a bit of uh, a elitist <laughs> and outdated uh, sports. But uh, you know, there's all, such a lot uh, of things to do. Uh, you know, in, in terms of sports and uh, using it to develop uh, a place. Okay. Yeah. I think so far it's been like insightful enough. Yeah. Um, another question I have for you is um, the COVID hit. Yeah. Um, you know, football is a is a crowded sport, yeah. more like basketball and the, and, and, and the likes, but we don't really have um, such, like we might actually attribute crowd to golf, but what, what, what has the impact of COVID been on golf since it's hit? Okay, um, just like um, in every sport, uh, it slowed it down, it changed the dynamics of the game. Uh, we played golf, uh, except when you know, there was um, um, you know, the sit at home uh, mm -hmm. uh, policy of government, but so long as you can come out, the game has been open. But we took some precautions. Uh, number one, we didn't play with caddies, so nobody carrying your bag, you carry it alone. Okay. Uh, it's not a close contact uh, sport. Mm -hmm. Social distancing, uh, you know, sort of uh, the game uh, guarantees that almost. And um, when you get to the potting uh, surface, we no longer, you know, have to, you know, put the ball in the hole, you hit the cup. It could bounce it back, so nobody touches your ball. So there were certain precautions we took. Um, and of course, a lot of people didn't bother to come out anyway, because they did, you know, didn't want to, to take the risk. But the ones who came out enjoyed the game. It's a bit more relaxed now. So COVID has affected uh, not just golf, but the way we do things now. And quite a lot of the things, we, uh, the adjustments we made, um, will remain for life, or for a long time. Because we found out that um, as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. So we're now beginning to do certain things you know, differently. Okay. Now, what like what age does one need to start playing golf, and what is needed for that? Okay. Uh, I would say the younger, uh, the better. There's no age for as long as you can coordinate your senses. Okay. You can coordinate your movement. Uh, you can swing. So from the age of two, three. You can do, in fact, the earlier the better because you can think about languages. Children pick up languages faster than adults ever will. So the same thing with sports. Anything you learn as a child, it's faster and easier to learn and it stays with you for life. Mm. So the earlier you begin to play golf. I see mm. Tiger Woods uh, playing now with his son. Yes. You know, I'm sure he hasn't just started playing now, started playing years ago. Mm. Okay, so, you know, for the clubs, you have the ones that the children can, can mm. swing with them. So there is no age. Start as young as you want, for as long as you can. Enjoy the game. All right, start as young as you can. 
and they start enjoying the game. Now, we've been hearing the voice of Honorable Ben Itiaba, the former um, chairman, captain, and president of Enugu Sports Club, and as well as his golf courses. Now, I think um, for now, like we need to actually bring you people like close to understand the feel of what it means, like maybe taking a swing. And according to him, um, he said, um, if you have to swing this thing for the first time, like after I think stay in bed for about two or three days so I can actually recuperate. I think I need to have that feel myself to see how really these things work. So we're taking a walk, a little walk into the into the golf course. So um, Honorable Ben can actually give us like a feel of what the the uh, the golf gear looks like. Is that the name, right? Yes, there's a golf bag, and golf you have bag. the it's a and then you have the kits, uh, the kits. the clubs in there. Yeah. All right, are people going to come with us? So we have to actually check the things in here, so um, Honorable Ben can actually give us um, what he yeah. feels and like. Before we do, okay, uh, I'm very particular with titles. Okay, I'm not uh, yet Honorable Ben. <laughs> Sorry about you know, that. You know, no, it's fine. That's just to correct, just for the audience, not for you. Okay. Uh, because you know, in Nigeria, we're addicted to titles. Okay. Um, I think they say honorable is when you're in the house. Mm. I've never contested for the house. So, okay. um, so um, I, I, I don't see what I have done to merit okay. that noble title. All right. Okay. I have a, an expectation and an aspiration, but that's different until I get there right. and win it. And by the grace of God, I believe I will. Okay. Then I, you can attach such titles to me. All right, no problem. Uh, yeah, thank you. All right, um, let's take a walk into the golf course. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we have here is the standard golf bag. And uh, usually here you'll have 14 clubs. Okay. 14 clubs. And the reason why you have 14 clubs is that each club has a purpose for it. Uh, like I said, golf is a game that enables you to take decisions, the right decisions. If you get your decisions right, you win. If you, make a, if you make a mistake, then you are allowed. This is why we have the handicap system. Okay. And they say, a golfer, what's your handicap? You say, yours is one, mine is 20, his one is 24. You know what that means? If your handicap is one, you're very good. Okay. Okay. If, if you're a professional, your handicap is zero. You don't have a handicap. You're not allowed any mistake. If, you, if like me, you are allowed 22, mm. then it means you're not doing so well. 24, yes. you know, okay, we cannot allow him to play with the us. The lesser the... Yeah. But what the handicap system does, it, it allows you to compete with a professional. In other words, I can play with Tiger Woods and defeat him. Yes. yes. Because I'm allowed, my handicap now is, uh, in the game is uh, 13. That means that over 18 holes, I'm allowed 13 mistakes. He's allowed none. So even if I miss my shot 13 times and he gets it right, right 13 mm -hmm. times, we'll tie. Okay? So to beat me, he has mm -hmm. to, I have to make more than 14 mistakes. That's the only way he can win. So that's what the handicap thing does. That's the first thing you learn. All right. Second one is the purpose of the clubs. This is the one wood. It's the longest club. Okay? You go from the one wood to the sand wedge, which is the shortest club. Each one has a purpose. You can see the difference in length. Yes. The longer the club, the longer the ball will go if you hit it with the club. If the club is short, it will go a lesser distance. In other words, if you are targeting a distance of about 80 meters, and you hit it with this long club, you'll miss it now because you go too far. But if you hit it with this one, then you're getting closer to the mark. Okay. And then you'll also notice that the longer the club, the flatter the surface, playing surface. The shorter the club, the more open okay. the playing surface is. You can see this one is very open. It's yes. almost flat. I see. Lying on the flat. Mm. So if you hit it with a short club, the ball will go high because it's flat. It will go high. If you hit it with this one, it will go low, but it will go long. So that's the purpose of the club. The only other club I need to mention is the putter. This is the one you finish with. Because when you get to the hole, you need to put the ball in the hole. Okay? Thank you. But I want to give you an average swing, what it looks like. Okay. And this is the way you play. You can hold your club. I mean, I'm doing the job of a golf pro now. Okay. And the golf pro is the one that teaches you what to do. But you, you hold your club like that. And then you lock. There are, there are many grips. This is the Vadon grip. The popular one that everybody uses. Okay. Yeah, most people use. But you thought from time to time you hear that people are working on a new grip. The new grip can be anything. People can be funny because they can hold it like that. But will it work? No, I don't think so. So Vadon grip is still where you lock your finger like that. Okay. So if you go like that. Okay. You can see, and then you come back and finish it like that. The ball will go straight. Once you get your swing right, the ball will go the right way. Okay. So usually you have three woods. We call them woods. Wood. In the olden days, 
when golf started, it used to be wood, but now they use all manner of uh, materials for this. But we still, you know, refer to them as uh, wood. Okay. This one is a titanium mix. Okay. And um, you have usually three. That's the one wood, the three wood, and the five wood. Sometimes you have a seven wood and a mix. But well, the rest are called irons. Irons. Yes. Do you have like and, a golf ball. Yes, and and and, and these and these um, clubs are numbered, and the number tells you what the ball does. The club does. Okay. But I won't. I won't allow you to hit the ball. No, it's okay. So you don't hurt anybody. No, it's okay. But it's a bullet. It's called a bullet. No, it's not called a bullet. It's called it's called a golf ball. Okay. But it's a bullet. It can kill. Yes, I do. If this hits uh, another human being, it, it can kill that human being. So, imagine this is the hole. You're trying to, you know, sort of get this ball into that hole. Okay? In golf, they say eyes on the ball. So, you keep your eyes on the ball. Okay? And then, all you're trying to do is to make sure you don't overheat. Okay? Depending on how well the surface is maintained. This is yeah. not a putting surface. If it was a putting surface, it would have just ended up there. And in the hole. So, that's it. That's the game in a nutshell. But what's important is to reiterate that in the game of golf, it's about decision making. So in other words, you see a shot. Okay, I'll give you an example. Can you see that mango tree there? Yeah, I can see it. Huh? This. Not this, the mango tree at the end I've there. I've seen it, I've seen it. Okay, I will very easily hit this ball, go beyond it, maybe 50 meters beyond it. Now? From here. Okay. You can do that. Let's see that. Very happens. easily. Yeah? You want to try me? Let's see that, sir. I'll be wasting this ball. And I, might, <laughs> I, I won't even do it because I might hit somebody there. Oh, who's there. going on that course. And you won't see him. You may not see him at the moment. But until the ball hits him. And then uh, I'll end up uh, having to cope with uh, a family. Uh, a lot of those accidents have happened in the past. Okay. So, but just to give you an, an example that this thing can be done. And, and even longer distance, depending on how good you swing. Okay. And it's not about power. The other, that's the other thing. It's not about power. What makes your ball go long is the three wood it's not the power you put in it by hitting it like a weightlifter indeed the easier your swing the softer your swing the longer the ball will go it's about technique yeah all right um <laughs> we've been able to get um, a very deep insight about how golf works around here and so far, so good. Um, it remains to be seen what I think can actually make out of this very, very beautiful time I, I had with Mr. Ben Etiaba. Etiaba rather. Now, we'll be seeing more of Mr. Ben Etiaba, hopefully, when uh, we have like something of, a, of a, a tournament happening around here, because this is also something we love doing. And um, one more can I say, I want to say loud thank you to you, sir, for giving us this time to be with you. And hopefully, if we have a um, need to actually come here some other time, to be honor having you with us again. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's a delight, and I'll always, always be happy to welcome you uh, back here anytime. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you, you very Jay. much. All right. Thank You're you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. All right. This is the man for us is in Uche, and this is still Sports One Scripted right here at my Color TV. I guess I'll see you when I see you. Stay safe and bye bye. My Color TV, life in living color.